Hey, what's going on guys? Dre here. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video is actually going to be kind of a chill video. Now, I did actually plan on filming another video for you guys, but it's actually pouring rain outside right now. So I guess that video is going to be for some other time, I guess, whenever the weather gets better. So instead of wasting the day, I actually decided to stay inside and record this video for you guys. So as you can tell by the title below, I'm actually going to be breaking down this rig build, this cinema rig build that I have right here. Now, I've actually posted this rig over on the YouTube community here on the channel. And I also did post it over on Instagram, which by the way, you should definitely go and follow me over there. It's actually Dre underscore Anthony dot H. I'll leave a link down in the description below. But I've actually gotten a lot of questions on how I build this rig. What are the parts that I use? Uh, how much does it actually cost to build out a rig like this? So. That's what I'm actually going to do today. I'm actually going to tear this rig down and build it back up piece by piece. And as I do that, just kind of give you my thought process as to why I chose some of the parts that I chose. And don't worry, I'll go ahead and leave the links to all the things that I speak about in this video down in the description. So it makes it easier for you to find the parts. So yeah, without any further ado, let's actually get to tearing this rig down and then build it back up. Okay, so let's begin with the brains of this rig build. And that's of course gonna be the camera body. Now, my camera body of choice for this build is gonna be the Canon R6 Mark II. It's my main camera for pretty much everything video related. And it's been really good, especially since upgrading from the original USR. It's built really well, has dual SD card slot, is capable of shooting full frame 4K of up to 60 frames per second in C-Log3 with 10-bit colors and is also capable of recording 6K RAW externally, which we will definitely get to later on. I have been using the R6 Mark II ever since it came out late last year, and I think it's definitely time to pretty much do a review on it. So if you want to see that, definitely get subscribed to the channel. Moving on to the cage that I'll be using to pretty much attach most of the accessories for this build and it's this cage from Nicerig. Now I already did a review of this cage so I'll leave that video linked below but essentially it has two locking points for the cage to fit securely to the camera. One at the bottom and one at the strap hole to the side. It also has rubber pads and a locating pin at the bottom of the cage that provides more stability and prevents twisting. I like to use this multi-tool from small rig that is really really handy to have especially when building out my rig but there's also a built-in magnetic screwdriver that you can use to tighten or unscrew the mounting screws which is really convenient to have should I actually need it in a pinch. Now, one small but really useful addition to the cage for this rig that I highly recommend is this hand strap also from small rig. Now, I like to think of this as my safety strap as it actually secures really well to my hand so that I don't have to worry about dropping my expensive camera. Next, we're going to build out our quick release base plate system. To do this, I'm using a combination of this 15 millimeter dual rod system from Nicerig. And on top is a quick release plate from small rig. With both already connected, I'm going to add these two carbon fiber 8 inch 15 millimeter rods from small rig, which is also going to help with adding other accessories for the build. The reason I went with these 8 inch rods is because I wanted the rig to be small and compact, but I might order some bigger 10 inch rods in the future, seeing that I will be looking to add more to this rig as time goes on. 
To basically complete this base plate system, I'm now going to attach this nicey rig quick release plate that's compatible with Arca Swiss type tripods. But one of the main reasons why I like this base plate is because it has four feet that pretty much helps with stability so that my rig perfectly sits solid, especially on flat surfaces. Now that our base plate system is pretty much built out, it's time to attach the camera to this base system. Now because the camera cage already has a built-in Arca Swiss plate at the bottom, there was actually no need for me to add another plate to the cage. It just sits and locks perfectly well to the smaller quick release base plate. Next up, we're going to add the top handle to the cage, which happens to be also from Nicey Rig. Now, I promise you, this video is not sponsored by any of these brands. I just pretty much find that they work really well for what I need it for. I believe this top handle is made specifically for this cage as it comes with a 3.8 RE locating screw at the bottom that fits perfectly to the cage. Now, I wouldn't say this top handle is anything special by any means, but it's actually well built and it really gets the job done. Now, moving on to what's gonna be the lens of choice for this rig, and it's the Canon RF 24mm f1.8 IS STM. So, usually I'm between this 24mm and my RF 35mm f1.8 as these two are pretty much my favorite focal lens, especially for video. They're both lightweight and keeps the rig light and compact. Sometimes I'll adapt my EF Tamron 24-70 f2.8, especially if it's one of those run and gun situation, but it's a little more on the bulky side and makes the rig a bit heavier. Next, we're going to add this V-mount plate to the back of our rig. Now, to this V-mount plate, firstly, I'm going to be attaching my audio adapter, which is the DXA Micro Pro from Beach Tech. Now, having an audio adapter like this is super versatile, as it is my absolute workhorse when it comes to having perfect audio for this rig. It actually allows me to bypass the built-in preamps of my camera and to also attach my XLR microphone of choice to the rig, which we'll definitely get to shortly. Second thing that I'm going to attach to the V-mount plate is this 99 watt V-mount battery from SmallRig. Now this is going to be my source of power to essentially power any accessory that needs to be kept powered. It has a USB-A and a USB-C PD port along with an 8 and 12 volt DC output and also a DTAP port. There's a nice LCD screen that will tell you how much power you're outputting to the different ports and also the amount of battery power you have remaining. So now that we have attached our V-mount battery to the rig, it's time to attach my external recorder. And for my rig, I decided to use my Atomos Ninja 5. And to mount the monitor to my rig, I'm gonna be using this monitor mount from Nixi, which has a quarter inch locating pin to attach the monitor and a 3 8 inch R locating pin, which locks perfectly to the top handle of the rig. Now, I don't think I need to go into specifics about the Ninja 5, as most of you guys would be quite familiar with it. But one of the main reasons why I decided to go with something like the Ninja 5 is because I'm actually able to unlock 6K raw recording when I'm recording externally to this Ninja 5 recorder. Okay, so now that we've added our monitor, it's actually time to attach my XLR microphone of choice. Now, the XLR mic that I've actually gone with is the Audio-Technica AT875R. It's a short, 
shotgun type of XLR microphone that is perfect for capturing dialogue. It's super directional and sounds really amazing, especially for its price. Now I used a super simple cold shoe mount and attached it to the mic clip, which is then mounted to one of the hot shoe mount on the camera cage. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this six inch right angle XLR cable to connect my microphone to my audio adapter in order to keep a clean build. Next, to power my monitor, I'm going to use this DC to DTAP cable that I got from Alvin's Cable. It's a coil cable, so again, it keeps the build clean and less cables to manage. Okay, great. Now that that's done, let's actually add a filter to the front of the lens. Now, because the filter thread size of my lens is much smaller than the actual filter that I'm going to be using, I normally use these step up rings from KNF Concept in order to fit my filter. And on top of that, I added another adapter ring in order to fit my matte box. Now, the matte box that is my go to for this rig is the small rig mini matte box light. Honestly, I think it's the perfect size for this rig build and it's super lightweight. Another big reason for using this matte box for this rig is because I'm also able to still use my regular circular ND filters. So where ND filters are concerned, my absolute favorite and ones that I highly, highly recommend is the Nisi True Color Variable ND filters. Now I've used a variety of other ND filters in the past, ones that you would consider to be budget and ones that are more on the pricey side. And this Nisi ND filter is by far absolutely my favorite, the best in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna connect the Ninja 5 to the R6 Mark II via HDMI. And the cable that we're gonna be using to do this is the Condor Blue coiled HDMI to micro HDMI cable. And the next cable that we're gonna connect to the camera is this USB-C to USB-C cable to keep the battery in the R6 Mark II charged when connected to the small rig V-mount battery. Once that's done, it's just a matter of doing some cable management. And usually I use these little cable sprigs that can be attached to one of the multiple quarter inch thread holes on the camera cage. Perfect. The rig build is almost complete, except for one thing. We need to add a side handle, and the side handle that I'm gonna be using is this nicey rig wooden side handle. And yeah, that's it. Now, this is my Canon R6 Mark II 6K RAW cinema camera rig build. Yeah, so essentially this is kind of my version of what I like to call a cinema rig build. Now I've gone ahead and I've tweaked a lot of things since I've started building out my camera into this rig build. And I'm sure I'm gonna probably make some more additions, make some more tweaks, make some more upgrades. I don't know, we'll see. But as it is right now, I think it actually works perfectly for what I need it for. Now, do you do you actually need to build out your camera into something like this? Probably not. But for me, 
I think turning my camera, my mirrorless camera into something more of a full-fledged video recording machine is actually worth it. Even though it's not quite a cinema camera, I kind of think it comes pretty close. So yeah, if you have any questions um, at all, go ahead, leave them down in the comment section. I always try to answer those as best as I can. Go ahead, leave a like on the video. Remember that helps the channel out a lot and it actually helps small creators like myself to reach more people. Also, if you actually like content like this and you want to see more, then definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so as yet, of course, I'm always happy to welcome new people here to this growing community. Anyways, thanks so much for watching and I'll definitely see you guys in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.